Shalom, brothers and sisters. Let us give glory and honor to the Most High God, to El Shaddai, the Lord Almighty, Yahweh, the Great I Am, the Alpha and Omega, the First and Last, the Beginning and End. Father, we glorify you. We glorify you for giving us knowledge and wisdom and understanding, for giving us all these knowledges, all these revelations, And all these beautiful advices so that we may know what to do so that we may know to act in your holiness father through yeshua your son jesus christ that the holy spirit be with us always to guide us in all things so that we may always glorify you father in yeshua's name we pray and declare this amen Welcome back, brothers and sisters, to the next part in the series. Today, we are going to be going through the duties of the harvest workers. Now, we are going to be speaking on the duties of the harvest workers. The first part to the duties is working the ground. As the harvest workers work the ground, this is symbolic to ministering to all peoples that Yah will lead them to. Through this, they will be working with the hearts and minds of the people. This is very helpful for them as they need encouragement and for us to believe in them. For if you do not believe in them, they will find it hard to believe in themselves. What do you mean? What I mean is this, say you are saying to someone, come on, let's jump over this ditch, but then you doubt they can even do it. Suddenly, they are doubting and find it incredibly hard just to take the jump, all because you didn't believe in them. To doubt anyone, this is a tactic from the enemy, but stay away from doing his tactics and instead be wary of them. On the other hand, Say the scenario went differently. Come on, let's jump over this ditch. You believe in the person and begin encouraging him, her. You can do it. I believe in you. I'm right here. Take the jump. Suddenly, they feel brave and full of courage and that person takes the jump and you begin rejoicing and praising Yah. So give encouragement to each other and keep strengthening one another as you do already. We appeal to you, my brothers, to be considerate to those who are working amongst you and are above you in the Lord as your teachers. Have the greatest respect and affection for them because of their work. Be at peace among yourselves. That was from the Jerusalem Bible, 1 Thessalonians 5 verses 11 to 13. Wherefore comfort yourselves together and edify one another, even as also ye do. And we beseech you, brethren, to know that which labour among you, and are over you in the Lord, and admonish you, and to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake, and be at peace among yourselves. The King James Version, 1 Thessalonians 5, verses 11 to 13. Here we see very clearly about encouraging others and strengthening them. In the scenario I gave by encouraging, we saw how that built up the person to do an overcoming task. We also saw that by doubting and not giving any encouragement at all, the person found the overcoming task impossible. This shows deeply how important encouragement is to the body of believers and non-believers alike. When trying to explain about God, Yahweh, to non-believers, we need to believe in them, show we care and are considerate to them, their emotions and situations, showing sensitivity, coming in a way that is approachable and friendly. When people are relatable, they open up more Relatable, you say? But how can we as believers be relatable to those who don't believe? 
very simple. Think back to your testimonies in Jesus, Yeshua. Think of where you were before you came to Mashiach, Christ. These testimonies will help. For instance, say you were speaking with someone who was doing drugs. You may have got saved from drugs, pulled away from that. You can then use that, saying, I used to do those drugs. But there is a remedy for that addiction, the addiction of Christ. He will save you if you are willing to give him a chance. This is how we can be relatable. Use your testimonies wisely and the non-believers will listen and hear you out. Sow that seed and let Yah do the rest. It's his job to save, you just plant. Be considerate to those who work alongside you and those who are above you in the Lord. Do not be condemning or cruel to your brothers or sisters when they are doing a task commanded by the Lord. Psalm 105 verse 15 says, Do not touch my anointed ones and do my prophets no harm. Let us take the example of Deborah who was not only a judge in Israel, but also a prophetess. She would sit by Deborah's palm between Ramah and Bethel in the highlands of Ephraim. The Israelites would come to her for their cases to be decided. Are we then to be cruel and condemning to her because she is doing the Lord's will? Or do we accept and respect her because Yahweh placed her there for a purpose? Just as he did with the later prophets, he placed them there to minister the truth, for warnings and rebuke. But most importantly, to draw them back to Yahweh and living his way. Proverbs 31 verse 26 She opens her mouth with wisdom, and the teaching of kindness is on her tongue. Titus 2 verses 3 to 4 Older women likewise are to be reverent in behavior. They are to teach what is good, and so train the young women to love their husbands and children. Psalm 68 verse 11. The Lord gives the word. The women who announce the news are a great host. Thus we are to be kind and loving to those whom the Lord chooses to speak through as vessels of truth. The Lord chooses whom he will. Do not shoot the messenger, but rather listen and hear what Yahweh is saying. Listen to his words and take note, before the pride consumes your heart and you harden it, just like the Israelites did in the desert. Likewise, be good to those who work alongside you, giving them respect and honour. We honour our brothers, we honour our sisters, for all their work. Philippians 4 Verse 3. Yes, I ask you also, true companion, help these women who have labored side by side with me in the gospel together with Clement and the rest of my fellow workers, whose names are in the book of life. Be peaceful among each other, speak life to one another, and speak peaceful words that we may reflect the light that is in us. Galatians 4 verses 9 to 12 Better two than one by himself, since thus their work is really profitable. If one should fall, the other helps him up. But woe to the man by himself, with no one to help him up. When he falls down, again they keep warm who sleep two together. But how can a man keep warm alone? Where one alone would be overcome, two will put up resistance, and a threefold cord is not quickly broken. When the harvest workers are set to work, he sends them out in twos for this very reason. If one falls, the other can help him up. If one is overcome, the other can encourage. 
Two is more effective than one. Yah will send them both. They will come down and begin preaching and ministering. One will begin the message and the other will end the message, working together as one unit, as souls should. In giving forth the message, the male begins by speaking on a knowledge, and the female speaks her part, which will be the wisdom of that said knowledge. Thus, they are working in a balance, working as a team, both vital parts to the message, yet shared. The male speaks on the counselling the soul, and the female speaks the understanding, so the soul is able to understand the counsel and receive it gladly. One cannot do without the other. Each part needs the other to complete the message as a whole. Then the soul is restored, refreshed, and healed with this knowledge, understanding the message and grateful of the help given. The elders say, the men should look at a woman in a sacred way. The men should never put women down or shame them in any way. When we have problems, we should seek their counsel. We should share with them openly. A woman has intuitive thought. She has access to another system of knowledge that few men develop. She can help us understand. We must treat her in a good way. In Luke chapter 10 is where we find Jesus sending out the 72 disciples in twos. From verse 1 to verse 12. After this, the Lord appointed 72 others and sent them out ahead of him, in Paris, to all the towns and places he himself was to visit. He said to them, The harvest is rich, but the labourers are few, so ask the Lord of the harvest to send labourers to his harvest. Start off now, but remember, I am sending you up like lambs among wolves. Carry no purse, no haversack, no sandals. Salute no one on the road. Whatever house you go into, let your first words be, Peace to this house. And if a man of peace lives there, your peace will go and rest on him. If not, it will come back to you. Stay in the same house, taking what food and drink they have to offer, for the labourer deserves his wages. Do not move from house to house. Whenever you go into a town, where they make you welcome. Eat what is set before you. Cure those in it who are sick and say, the kingdom of God is very near to you. But whenever you enter a town and they do not make you welcome, go out into its streets and say, we wipe off the very dust of your town that clings to our feet. And leave it with you. Yet be sure of this, the kingdom of God is very near. I tell you, on that day, it will not go as hard with Sodom as with that town. As we can see through this text, Yeshua is sending out a group of faithful believers to do his will. He sends them out in twos, informing them with a very important detail. They are lambs among wolves. Wolves normally come in packs, and their objective is to destroy the lambs. In this instance, the wolves are destroying the works of the disciples, making it very difficult for the disciples in their work. Yeshua also mentions a strategy to deal with these vicious wolves. In Matthew 10 verse 16, it says, Vice is spoken. Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be you therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. King James Version. First and foremost, he mentions being in the midst of the wolves as sheep. Sheep are considered very humble and innocent creatures, as are doves. They are gentle and soothing creatures, but they can also swoop away swiftly and elegantly. This is about being wise, thinking beforehand, not rushing in, but seeking the counsel of Yahweh and heeding to his instruction. Have wisdom with you, 
and listen to her as she speaks. Where Yahweh speaks, she herself will whisper to those who are willing to be wise. Proverbs 14 verse 15 says, The man of discretion watches as he treads. Another version. Prudent gives thought to his steps. Prudent simply means showing care or thought, being wise. So when we think of this, the gifts of the Ruach HaKodosh, Holy Spirit, come to mind. The gift of discernment, being wise enough to know when a belief is truly heeding to you or is being false. Discernment is the very key in working in this area. The Holy Spirit will help you to discern and to be wise, but you must be willing to listen, be obedient and humble in your quest. So what is wisdom? For within her is a spirit intelligent, holy, unique, manifold, subtle, active, incisive, unsullied, lucid, invulnerable, benevolent, sharp, irresistible, beneficent, loving to man, steadfast, dependable, unperturbed, almighty, all serving, penetrating all intelligent, pure and more subtle spirits. For wisdom is quicker to move than any motion. She is so pure, she pervades and permeates all things. She is a breath of the power of God, pure emanation of the glory of the Almighty. Hence nothing impure can find a way into her. She is a reflection of the eternal light, untarnished mirror of God's active power, image of his goodness. Although alone, she can do all, herself unchanging, she makes all things new. In each generation, she passes into holy souls. She makes them friends of God and prophets. For God loves only the man who lives with wisdom. She is indeed more splendid than the sun. She outshines all the constellations. Compared with light, she takes first place. For light must yield to night. But over wisdom, evil can never triumph. She deploys her strength from one end of the earth to the other, ordering all things for good. What can we take from this? Is the certain characteristics of wisdom. For example, she is holy. How do we be holy? We be holy by following the commands of Yah, having a, ded a dedication to our Father. Subtle, meaning nice, precise, delicate and rare. We are to be a peculiar people to show the difference between a holy people and an unholy people. By doing this, we are being rare. Nice is about showing kindness, which is one of the fruits of the Holy Spirit. To be kind, you need to be compassionate to others, their situations and emotions. Be good to them. Precise is about being clear and well-spoken or clear in your motives towards others. So there is no miscommunication or confusion. Make yourselves clear on what you are communicating and what your actions are. Delicate. When we think of being delicate, you may think of a ladylike woman. That's halfway there. Keep that thought in mind. Being delicate is about being sensitive to others, being a lamb or a dove, being gentle with one another in pure love. Active or lively, being energetic, fun loving and cheerful. This characteristic will help the soul you are sent to as you show the passion you have in your faith and they in turn will be encouraged, feeling full of life and ready to face all things through Mashiach, through Christ. The cheerfulness will encourage them to leap into action and the fun-loving part will help them feel so loved by their Creator and by their brothers and sisters, as they will feel Father's love through you both as you minister to their soul. Pure is a form of holiness. 
one that abides in Yah's commands and lives a life that is loving with all creatures and creations of Yah, showing compassion and love to them, one who is modest in appearance, speech and behaviour. We are to be reflections of Yeshua, Jesus, everything he taught on holiness, on purity, on doing the will of the Father, we do this and we are being reflections. Remember, we must do the fruits of the Spirit as well as these characteristics I have just spoken. I have explained how you can do it. All you need now is time and patience and you shall achieve this in perfection with the Holy Spirit guiding you the whole way. Amen.